and it's doing it almost like an immune system response. Like what what we're reacting to and what we're recognizing from all this stuff is like, oh, we didn't know what this was. And this has uh, resulted in this riot, whatever you want to call the Capitol Hill attack. And now we're looking at more censorship on social media. We're looking at, uh, you know, like them trying to batten down the hatches and figure out how to handle something like QAnon or the people that were allegedly promoting these ideas. A lot of them that are banned from social media, the, the stuff that you highlighted in your show. We, we have to figure out what's true and what's not true. And so there's been some sort of draconian measures that have been um, suggested, you know, like uh, hiring some sort of a team that goes over social media and make sure that everything is according to what they deem to be correct or incorrect, which obviously is y y subject to biases. And we're, we're very aware that that's going on today, that there's a lot of that going on today where the, the necessarily the truth doesn't like the Hunter Biden laptop story is a great example of that, right? Like uh, the social media platforms, they censor. I mean, thanks to all these Antifa terrorists, cities are basically a war zone, so it's a fair comparison. Dude, I love watching Chud videos and then having, like, a bunch of dumbasses come in here, dude. Oh, he said it's Femboy Summer now. Okay, he's joking. But there are people who, like, unironically come in here and they're like, oh, this guy's watching my kind of content. He's got camo hat on. That's right. And then he's like, wait a minute. He's saying some pussy lip tart shit. What the fuck? You know what I mean? And then, and then they're like, wait, wait a minute. Oh, you got your nails painted. You... You're freaking gay, brother. I got you. <laughs> bet you bet you got your nails painted at the gay salon. <laughs> they just like hurt themselves in confusion when they see me fucking bearded and, and with a fucking, you know, camo hat watching hog videos and they think they're in good company. Sir news from the New York Post, one of the oldest newspapers in America on the Hunter Biden laptop story because they Bro, the New York Post is dog shit. God damn it. The New York Post is not a fucking, it's a rag, dude. It's literally just dog shit. It's a horrible newspaper. They decided that it, somehow or another it was propaganda or somehow or another it was not good to get that information, but it was news. It was real news. It was a real story. Yeah. Hunter Biden's cock was real news. And they decided it was too close to the election. This could hurt Biden. We don't want Trump to win. So you're dealing with biases. This is not just like simply, here's information that we know to be true, or here's information that we know to be a lie. We're going to stop that from getting through. No, they knew it to be true, but they decided to stop it because it wasn't convenient or it didn't fit the narrative they were trying to promote. Right. It's very... It's, I mean, how do you find a neutral arbiter of right. the truth? Right. Um, if, if you are... Who the fuck is this guy? Colin... Hoback? Bro, the Hunter Biden laptop was such fucking bullshit. And I say this as someone who did cover the story. And I say this as someone who 100% like thought that uh, the, the media suppression of Hunter Biden's laptop was like ridiculous at the time. Oh, he made the QAnon doc on HBO? Oh, okay. So he's, he's actually a reasonable person, right? Anyway, um... The Compromont obsessed libs. The Compromont obsessed libs. It is real news. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, but also, I personally said that the fucking Russiagate shit was totally blown out of proportion and ridiculous. Guys, I remember a time when most of you were, you know, probably still fucking shit posting in like, you know, uh, alt right circles and shit. But I remember when Seth Abramson was like regarded as a legitimate source of news. Like, there was a point in time when like liberals lost their fucking minds dude i mean they still are but like 2016 there were there were so many people that were just like in louise mensch yeah louise mensch like there were so many people that had just like completely fucking lost their minds on this shit where they were like everything is happening because uh donald trump is is compromised by vladimir putin no it is louise mensch that's what i'm talking about anyway so you know they're yeah they they had lost their minds. They were fucking covering like idiotic shit. But the, the funny thing is like the same people that criticize liberal media for TYT ate up Russia prop in 2016. Oh, for sure. 
I mean, definitely, but that was another point of contention or at least a disagreement that I had with TYT. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say is you did early days. I didn't think it was bullshit, but you made me realize it was before some of the gen pop caught on. So those very same people that were shitting on the Russiagate stuff then turned in and were like, why aren't we covering Hunter Biden? It's like, dude, the fuck do you mean? It, it's basically the the republican version of russiagate perhaps even worse than that like it's even dumber than russiagate at least you can make an argument that like russia is another country is a foreign adversary they want they actively want to disrupt uh our elections they have a vested interest in a similar capacity that we often disrupt other countries elections in way worse ways in way more direct ways right but like the hunter biden laptop was so fucking stupid they were saying like oh the big guy the big guy. Oh, I bet the big guy is like, you know, Xi Jinping or the big guy must be, uh, you know, they're, they're getting kickbacks and like every little thing that they fucking latched onto, including the way that the fucking laptop was, uh, that the way that the laptop came into the hands of the New York post was just bullshit. Like it came from fucking Rudolph Giuliani, man. Are you kidding me? Who got it from like some fucking QAnon, uh, computer, uh, like a blind QAnon guy who fixes computers. Give me a break. Give me a fucking break. And it didn't stick. One, because there was a mass suppression from the media. And I do get annoyed whenever they fucking do this. Why are you lying? You play defense for Liptards every day? You sweat the Hunter Biden shit under the rug, you Liptard? No, I fucking love the Hunter Biden shit. I covered it positively, motherfucker. I literally not only covered it, but I covered it positively. Because I think Hunter Biden is dope. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, there wasn't like these like grand conspiracies beyond like Hunter Biden totally using the last name Biden and, uh, you know, getting jobs in places that he had no business getting jobs in. And that uh, he failed upwards as a consequence of being a Biden his entire life. Anyway are going to entrust someone with that responsibility and i think that that's it, it, it's just an incredibly slippery slope incredibly slippery and and what uh, these big tech companies have have uh suggested is that well maybe we don't use but one was true and one was false what do you mean most of the fucking hunter biden shit was just complete exaggerations not dissimilar to the russiagate stuff the russiagate hysteria so it was, it was the hog version of, of Russiagate. Like they were trying to say Hunter Biden fuck kids. Cause he has like, uh, photos with children. And then it came out that it was like his fucking nieces, dude. Like it was insane. It was, it was literally insane. All the, all the cool shit that he did, like fucking, you know, doing crack with, uh, strippers and stuff. Like, yeah, that's real. I don't give a fuck. He did not fuck his niece, chat. They were saying that Hunter Biden had photos with young girls on his laptop. It's like, yeah, it's his fucking laptop. And those are photos with him and his family. Yeah, they, they like tried posting photos of his fucking fat cock. That failed miserably. My man has a, my man was a mad dog with a fat hog. Okay. And here you had the entirety of the Republican party being like, I can't believe Hunter Biden has a dick swinging below his knees, dude. That is devastating. This is... This will surely tank. This will surely tank his campaign. And then they leaked his text messages between him and his fucking dad. And that didn't work either. And then Donald Trump tried to use that shit. Donald Trump tried to use that shit against Joe Biden. And Joe Biden came across like a human for once. Hunter got thrown out of the military. He was thrown out dishonorably discharged. That's not true. For it wasn't dishonorably. cocaine use. And he didn't have a job until you became vice president. Once you None became of vice president, he made a fortune in Ukraine, in China, in Moscow, that is simply and various not other places. True. He my made son, a fortune. Gentlemen, my son. And he didn't have a job. My son, like a lot of people, like a lot of people we know at home, had a drug problem. He's overtaken it. He's, he's, he's fixed it. He's worked on it. And I'm proud of him. But why was he given tens son. of millions right. of dollars? But he wasn't given right. tens of millions he was of dollars. That is totally, of that's President Trump, totally President Trump, discredited. Trump, you've already, this, we've already been totally already discredited. Been. If you recall during the elections, like in the debates where he was like, oh, Hunter, why aren't you talking about Hunter? He did crack. He did crack. And he was like, yeah, my son was, a, my son was an addict. 
and he was recovering like millions of families uh that go through this every uh, every year in this country my son was an addict he's recovering and i love him like and it just fucking wrapped it up and i love him and i support him and americans were like damn that's just right use humans maybe we use algorithms AI, right, right. we're trying to cancel him for calling his lawyer the n-word dude <laughs> You know, to, to to moderate everything, and you know, the algorithms had had that that in many ways had bolstered something like Q because they're they're basically uh, sociopathic when it comes to just trying to drive attention as much as possible. So now they can kind of invert those algorithms. And Compared to like RussiaGate, that only had twelve people actually convicted of crimes around it. Wow, convicted of crimes around it is doing a lot of fucking work there, my friend. Like. Ultimately, a lot of the people that were convicted during the Russiagate shit were horrible monsters, but they weren't convicted because they were, like, collaborating with the Russian government. They were convicted for other shit. Which, by the way, don't get me wrong, they should be convicted, and so should the fucking Democrats that literally do the exact same shit on a daily basis, including, like, Podesta, who worked with, uh, uh what's-his-face, Donald Trump's fucking campaign manager, uh, Paul Manafort. So... And, and punish those who um, talk about uh, that kind of content. And oftentimes, even if, even if their goal was just to prevent, prevent I don't know, conversation around um, QAnon because they consider it to be problematic, what else gets swept up, what else gets swept up with that? Um, I mean, I saw, I saw a lot of people who were reporting on QAnon maybe coming from the, uh, the side of critiquing it. Their videos were being wiped out. Um, you know, people who were documenting January the 6th, their content was being wiped out. People so who were critical of QAnon, they had websites that were um, sort of on the other side. That was being wiped out as well. And, and that's because, of course, it's, a, it's sort of this blunt force that, that, uh, that an algorithm wields. So people even, people that were analyzing the movement from a critical standpoint, people who were looking at like how ridiculous this is, look at this, they had their chance. They only forgave him because he did rich kid drugs? Hunter Biden was forgiven because he did rich kid drugs. Hunter Biden did rich kid drugs. My man did crack, bro. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? If crack cocaine is rich kid drugs, then what is a poor person drug, dude? He did fucking crack. He was only forgiven because he was a rich kid. But never say that he did rich kid drugs. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? My man was like one step away from fucking doing crocodile and you're over here being like, oh, I can't believe he did rich kid drugs. Like, what the fuck? He was doing crack, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Channels wiped out. Yeah, he did the proletarian cocaine. Like, he, he literally did the cocaine of the working class. As well? Yes. So any content on QAnon, they just want to erase it from the internet, essentially. That seemed to be the, the initial response, yeah. It's, it's so strange and, and, and that they if, all move together in sync. I mean, I, I think that if I did not have, you know, HBO in my sales with this project, it wouldn't have seen the light of day. Really? Like if you tried to put it on YouTube, you think? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, when we, even when we, so when we first released the series, um, you know, there was, there was, there were some articles floating around like, oh, maybe this is going to make it things worse. Um, if I typed in Q into the storm into YouTube, it wouldn't auto-populate at a certain point. It started out auto-populating, and then that went away. So, um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't feel confident at all that, um, you know, if we didn't have a, a gorilla in our corner, uh, that, um, that this story that revealed ultimately who was behind QAnon uh, would have been seen, would have been able to find an audience. Um, and that, shout out to HBO. <laughs> shout that, out I mean, to HBO. They, I mean, they really have my back. Some they've this, been so. amazing for decades. You know, you really think about it. I mean, they're the people that when Bill Maher's show Politically Incorrect got pulled off of, uh, what was it, on ABC? I forget. Yeah, I'm not sure. Network television. Um, they immediately took it, brought it over, turned it into real time, and made it even better. Made, you know, it's uncensored now. And, and it's, in my opinion, real time with Bill Maher is probably one of the very best social commentary shows and and comedy shows that like really doesn't pull any punches oh my fucking god dude yeah the subversive bill maher i can't believe that hbo's having such a hard time keeping the subversive commentary 
of fucking Bill Maher, dude. It's literally constantly fucking whining to a camera about cancel culture every fucking week. There's nothing like edgy. There's nothing subversive. There's nothing scary for HBO about liberal ass Bill fucking Maher, who basically is just whining about young kids and how fucking spoiled everyone is. Okay. Bill Maher has not been edgy since his show originally got canceled in 2001. Then he said the 9-11 terrorists were brave. You know, what's not brave lobbing hellfire missiles from 2000 miles away. At least those terrorists were in those fucking, uh, uh planes. That was actually fucking subversive. Now he just says the N word. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and trust me, that's not exactly the same kind of commentary. Okay. That's it. Is on any network ever. You want to hear something fucking crazy. So yes, just yesterday I was talking with uh, someone who's helping distribute the film and I said, well, what about Amazon? You know, are we going to be able to put it out on Amazon internationally? And they said, well, as of the last year, they have stopped taking documentaries. All documentaries. What? You cannot publish a documentary what? On, on, on their platform. And the reason was because th that I was told <laughs> is because, you know, there was, there was all this conspiracy, flat earth stuff, and they were, they were getting blowback that eventually they said, we don't want to have to decide what what's we publish real? and what we don't, what's real and what's not. We're just Wait, Amazon published the Pentagon Papers. What the fuck's he talking about? Or uh, a documentary on the Afghanistan Papers, did they not? Amazon Studios actually published, like, some fucking crazy shit. That was a fictional movie? No, it wasn't. Amazon Studios has been doing a fuckload of CIA propaganda. They have been doing an insane amount of, like, pro-CIA propaganda. Every single piece of content that Amazon Studios has put out that's, like, scripted so far has been insane, including the Michael B. Jordan movie about JSOC, Jack Ryan, all this shit. However... On, sucking Amazon's dick? You think I'm sucking Amazon's dick when I... Dude, why do chatters have, like, lack comprehension? And then they blame me for their own fucking failures. Like, I'm literally criticizing Amazon right now. However, having said that, they also did... Um, they also did fucking... Amazon Prime Video Direct and the dystopian decisions to stop accepting documentaries. Holy shit, this is really recent. I'm surprised by this. Because they did, they did upload, like, I mean, they had the fucking, what's his face? The, uh, the Pentagon Papers, uh, or the Afghanistan Papers documentary, which was, you know, pretty solid and surprising for them to, to post. He said they're not taking documentaries since this year. But thank God the boys still exist. The boys is like scripted content that is absolutely fucking anti-American imperialism. So... And probably my favorite show. I'm going to publish anything. Oh and God. the example they gave me that they couldn't get published was The Cove. I don't know if you saw that documentary. The, do the dolphin yeah, documentary. Yeah, the dolphin yeah. documentary. You know, it won an Oscar. Yeah. And I, just, to, just to check it, you know, I looked it up. And sure enough, The Cove wasn't available on, on Amazon. So, you know, those who said that there wouldn't be a slow creep of censorship, you know, kind of starting with things that I think everybody agrees should be, you know, they wouldn't like to be in society. You know, things like the Daily Stormer, maybe a lot of people don't want 8chan. You know, it's a, there's a progression, Yeah. you know, until you end up, it seems like something like, <laughs> you know, the, the Cove can't find an audience on a, on a major platform. Um, and I don't want to conflate government censorship with the corporate censorship too much. However, in a lot of ways, it does feel like the government has passed the buck to these corporations to do what they legally can't, which I think is the same thing we saw the government do with privacy, right? Like, they wouldn't have been able to get all of this data from us directly, but if you give it to a Facebook or a Twitter, uh, it's very easy for the government to then go and get access to that information. So I think what we saw happen with the Fourth Amendment, we're now seeing happen with the First Amendment, where they can say, well, look, we, we couldn't restrict conversation around certain topics. We couldn't directly um, decide. Isn't this the guy that made the QAnon documentary? Like, why? What's his way of what? What's his way of dealing with uh, QAnon misinformation?
happen with the Fourth Amendment, we're now seeing happen with the First Amendment, where they can say, well, look, we, we couldn't restrict conversation around certain topics. We couldn't directly um, decide what's true or what's not. We're going to put that in the hands of these companies. And of course, these companies have uh, intimate relationships with, um, with many members of, of, of the government. You know, there's a revolving door there. So I, 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 I when people want to talk about what limiting what we can say online or limiting um, disinformation to other things, I, I think that it's almost the wrong place to start. I think we have to go back to the privacy issues. And I actually think if we had not let privacy be eroded online, we wouldn't be having this debate. You know, because if, if these gigantic companies hadn't collected thousands of data points on us, you know, didn't know our fears, our desires, um, if they hadn't built these psychometric profiles, they wouldn't have been able to manipulate us, use these algorithms to drive us into echo chambers, which have really created these disparate realities. And now these disparate realities can't agree necessarily on a set of facts. Um, sometimes you, you're, you're considered, um, you know, sometimes people will be ostracized for even to talking to somebody from the quote unquote other side, right? Um, and, and so now there's this conversation about what should be allowed to be said online. Uh, and I think that that's simply a byproduct of, of um, you know, our privacy having been eroded. So, you know, if I was to do anything about these issues, I would start by restoring rights. I would go back and say, all right, well, how do we get, you know, how do we get um, ownership and privacy rights um, online when it comes to our, our personal data? Let's start there before we, we start, you know, going after the speech itself. What? What's his suggestion? <laughs> the Does he talk experience. about it in the... Do you think that the... Uh, I want to know if he talks about it in the documentary. Damn, he just fucking... He just kind of... He just kind of looped me in. I mean, I do understand that because of the erosion of the First Amendment, uh, the government does outsource censorship to private corporations. And private corporations literally do not do a good job demonstrably of dealing with the misinformation because they are, their vested interest is in uh, improving their profits, like increasing their profit margins. That's why Facebook pops the fuck off with misinfo. They don't give a shit. They want to keep you on the fucking platform. They know that like, uh, you know, Crazy shit keeps you in the rabbit hole and in the platform for longer. So I don't know what he, he's just like, how are you going to combat misinformation? Does he not think it's a problem? Algorithms are designed to do this, or do you think that it's just a function of human nature that we tend to gravitate towards things that outrage us and then huddle up together in echo chambers? that this is just a natural tribal behavior and that what the algorithms do is essentially just highlight what we're really interested in. They magnify it in a feedback loop, right? So you're right to say that humans do have these traits. Um, you know, and I, I haven't designed the algorithms, but I've also talked to people who have, and you know, a lot of it, they don't even understand how they work at a certain point. Like they're off to the races. Have you seen The Social Dilemma? Yeah. Yeah. What would you think about that? It's great. It's Amazing, great. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, scary I, too. Like uh, the conclusions that they draw. Oh, certainly. I mean, I yeah, I made a film about eight years ago called Terms and Conditions May Apply. You know, and that that came out right before the Edward Snowden revelations. You know, and when it came out, peop, the initial response was like, "Oh, this is maybe conspiratorial. Surely the government doesn't have this much." insight into our behavior and, and, and you know and access to um to our devices and our personal information and then the snowden revelations came out and then it was like oh well maybe the series didn't go far enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um you know and i uh and and back then we had talked about the idea of how how is technology influencing us how is it changing us manipulating us and it didn't feel like that was the biggest story at the time and this question of privacy and how our rights are being eroded through these 
agreements that nobody ever really reads. And you could find all, all kinds of uh, juicy tidbits uh, hidden in there in terms of what the companies were actually doing and kind of revealing this unholy collusion between the government and, and, and big tech. Um, you know, but uh, it, at the time, people would often say, well, what's the cost? You know, what's the big deal if they're mining my personal data to serve me with ads? Yeah. And I'd say that th the environment we find ourselves in now is the cost. Do you do anything to personally protect your data? Do you, like, use DuckDuckGo for searches and th things on those lines? Uh -huh. You've Brave uh -huh. as a browser. Like, do you do that stuff? All that, Bro, yeah. what the fuck? No, you don't. Dude, anyone who says they use DuckDuckGo that think that that is protecting their data is so fucking stupid. Like, how are you going to fucking constantly talk about government surveillance and then be like, oh, duck, 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 go. It does, you idiot. Okay, dude. How are you getting on duck, duck, go? You're still using your phone or a computer. You're using the internet. I think you're wrong with this take. It does Google filter searches. Search the same thing on both Google and duck, duck, go. It gives you different results. It's part of a DuckDuckGo. It doesn't cover everything, but you can use a lot of precautions to stay anonymous on the internet. Uh, yeah. yeah, use Signal. VPNs. Mm -hmm. yeah. VPNs. I mean, I, I do my best, you know, to, if a government actor really wants to get at you, they're going to be able to. Yeah. I mean, you saw the NSO clickless spyware story, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I mean, if, if there's a zero day that allows you to get access to a microphone and everything... Chat, let me just say something, okay? If you're in my chat currently on Twitch, watching me watch Joe Rogan, you can use Google instead of DuckDuckGo, okay? You've already lost the plot. You're newsflash, you're literally compromised, okay? Like, just use normal Google and that's it. Finding IP addresses, the hacker factor blog. I'm not clicking on that thing that someone's doing on their phone without them even having to click on a link. You know, it's game over. Of course, governments will abuse that. Yeah. And probably are right now. Probably are right now. Yeah. Where's yeah. Our, where are our phones at? Right <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's interesting because you would think that there'd be a market for a platform that becomes bulletproof. And there have been some, you know, Linux-based uh, cell phone operating system phones that they sell. Like they buy a phone, you get a Google phone, they de-Google it and put different software on it and stuff. But I'm, I'm not sure if that's like... If you Bitch, I'm watching through my neighbor's window. Fuck you. <laughs> Wait, did this motherfucker say freedom phone? Stop. De-Google it and put different software operating system phones that they sell like they buy a phone you get a google phone they de-google it and put different software on it and stuff but i'm, I'm not sure if that's like they de-google it what bro ultimately the moment that you put a fucking sim card in your fucking phone it's a wrap okay i don't know why people keep saying this like the moment that you fucking put a sim card in your phone it's game over your ISPs will willingly hand over all of that information to the authorities at any given moment. Authorities already have a backdoor half the fucking time, and they have legal or extra legal ways of reaching that information if they want to or if they need to. They, I can't believe they're talking about Edward Snowden and then being and then saying dumb shit like de-googling your phone. Like, how are you gonna bring up Edward Snowden? And be aware of all of that and then turn around and be like, and then you de-Google your phone, okay? And then, you know, it's just like, it's fine after that. <laughs> like, come on, it's like Linux-based. <laughs> if you're deluding yourself into believing that you're actually protected with that stuff or you actually are protected, right. I would think they could work around all those things, especially something that's... I mean, it's essentially like open source, right? Like, you, like if it's a, a Linux-based operating system, there's some super geniuses out there. I'm sure they're going to be able to hack into that. Yeah, I mean, I think with stuff like 
signal. You're just you're just protecting yourself as best you can. Right. right? You use something that's that's end to end encrypted. You're doing better than ninety nine percent of people who are right. out there. You're making somebody really have to work to get access to your to your to your stuff. And if you're using a VPN and you're using DuckDuckGo, yeah. then you're you're minimizing your digital footprint. And you're not as you're not worth as much as these companies, and they're not able to to you know. Uh, manipulate you, I guess, in the same way through these algos. But let me ask you this. I mean, would you, what would you do about the algorithm problem, right? Because on the one hand, algorithms are necessary for something like a search engine. On the other hand, um, you know, they are, they drive the most sensational content, things like QAnon. Um, and, uh, and I think have largely facilitated the situation we find ourselves in now. Watch the entire I did a test DDG and Google search for the same thing. This is how different of a result you get after DGG shows you the truth. Wow, incredible, incredible, incredible results, chatter. Thank you, undead person. Horse worming? When to worm your horse? Wait, what is this? <laughs> That's a good one, dude. 